We found him. Sorry, <laughs> we were just a few minutes there, but we just had to look for Tyler. And he's around, so we're okay. Uh, to be fair to Tyler, the games have gone very quick today, That's which true. means his scheduled time of play was like maybe for another hour yet or something. So we've been going quite quickly, which means he just wasn't quite ready for the earlier call time, which is completely understandable. It's true, actually, so very it's okay. Quick. We're going very quick today, exactly. But we are all good and ready to go right now. Tyler versus Rivius for the final match of the day. Confirmation that they both exist. Uh, there's a <laughs> shield on the warrior for Rivius and a druid band out. Druid also banned out for Tyler, but going for the shield on that priest. And Tyler, again, you know, we've already talked about this, of course, as he's already played, mm -hmm. but going for that Holy Wrath Paladin because because he just likes the deck and, and enjoys playing it, and it's good. So it ticks all the boxes for me. And he seems to be pretty proficient at the yeah. deck. Uh, given that, you know, this is, uh, in my opinion, I don't think he would begrudge me saying this, not peak Tyler. Given how highly he has ascended in his Hearthstone career, I think when he was at his best, playing the absolute most amount of Hearthstone, he was, if not the best, Absolutely top 10, mm -hmm. arguably even top 5, yeah. which, given all Hearthstone players, is a very, very I, I big achievement. I think top 10 would be a very easy thing for everyone to say. You know, yeah, it wouldn't yeah. be like, oh, I don't know. It's like, no, yeah. just top 10. He was absolutely fantastic. Uh, but now, it seems to be that even though he's not practicing as much as he once was at his absolute peak, still seems to just absolutely have the fundamental grasp of Paladin, which I was actually begrudging to him. Like, you know, how can he still just be so good at this tech? It seems almost unfair that he's naturally so gifted. Yeah, well, speaking of naturally gifted, Rivius has a gift of just doing his own thing and oh, being yeah. extreme, maybe one of the most creative players when you combine creativeness with success. Yeah. I could be pretty creative. It doesn't work. <laughs> uh, whereas Rivius manages to it's pull true. it off. Uh, well, uh, this control warrior, as you can see, the faceless, the, the brewmaster, we got a hint of that the other day in a very slow mirror match versus Surrender. Uh, but the Highlander Hunter, again, just using that silence as an extra card in there. Rivius has silence in every one of his decks, yeah. uh, along with this shame. And you have taken a, uh, a liking to, I think it's fair to say. Yes, I think anything that manages to do a good job of shutting down, uh, for the most part, Priest, uh, is a good strategy to go for. As I think what Rivius has gone for is a slightly different strategy from what we saw from Staz, where he was trying to attack both Priest and Druid. I think what we're seeing here from Rivius is he's still got a good shot against the Druid, but he's trying to go more against anti-warrior and anti-priest at the right. same time. Because in his uh, warrior list, he of course has a Brewmaster and Faceless to copy an extra version of Elysiana to go even further in fatigue. We saw it yesterday in the mirror. It just wins, basically, because it has more fatigue to be able to get it there. This Shaman that he has seems to be very, very well positioned against the Priest because it just locks down all their stuff early on, transforms their minions uh, with Plague of Murloc, so Psycho Pomp is a lot worse. And also in terms of the warrior matchup, it feels like this uh, shaman can also do a good job because it has Elysiana and then Shadowock for a second Elysiana effect to go right. even further in into fatigue. And I really like that effect from Rivius because I think that while some players have been deviating away from Druid, at least in Asia Pacific, Warrior is still top dog. It is. And I what I want to see out of this matchup is how this shaman deck does because I think Rivius can do well with the, with the Warrior. Uh, and and even potentially like two, two shield classes here. This just isn't this just isn't correct, <laughs> is it? <laughs> Fixed. Um, Rivers can do well with the. Um you know, with, with the Warrior, I think, in the way he's built some of these matches, like Warrior Mirror, you just have to give the favorite to Rivius based on the deck yep. he's played or is playing. But for me, I want to see how this Shaman does versus Priest, because I've not really seen it <laughs> in GM yet, just to yeah. see how, how strong this level of tech is, or whether Priest just goes, well, unless you don't, uh, unless you literally get rid of every <laughs> single minion on the board every single turn, yep. if you stick one, and then you die, does it make a difference? But also, the query for me is like, Tyler's Paladin versus the Shaman. Well, Shaman can't really go past 30 outside of exactly the turn you play That's Hagatha true. if you are on 30. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, Shaman can't, has got a lot of heal, but not enough. And the hexes and stuff don't mm. do anything against Paladin. So, that would be an interesting one. Yeah, I think, I think Tyler might just about have an overall edge as long as he gets this Priest through, and if there's ever a deck you need to like, you can get through a tough matchup, it's Priest, because they could just win sometimes. And if ever there was a hand that he would do it with, this looks like one of them. Uh, there is 
a pretty clear lack of... Well, actually, I guess there's a pretty clear lack of a couple of things. A cleric, of course, number one, because the card draw just allows you to go for the strategy that we saw earlier from Glory, where you don't really commit too much. You just keep drawing, because as long as there's something on the board, Divine Spirit in a Fire closes out the game every time. But the other aspect he's missing is actually aggression. All of the minions in his hand that he can play, apart from Bon Samedi, obviously, later on in the game, a very low attack. Yeah, I think what I foresee for now as a solid uh, build for Tyler is just going into Injured Tolve coin powered shield to set up for Injured Tolve number two plus circle. The powered shield draws a card. Sure. And so by next turn, you also one, have a solid turn next turn, but two, have two card draws. This one and the one you natural draw next turn. Mm. Never set. Maybe that gets used instead. We'll see. But that puts you arguably two beefy minions on board not now because of exactly that minion yeah. <laughs> uh, that card sorry but yeah, yeah. it should have quotes put two big minions on the board for Tyler to start chipping away with and keep them healthy that's a good one as well these are some very nice top decks this is starting to come together pretty nicely for Tyler and this is where I think it will really test his macro it's strategy yeah, yeah well yeah test his chops that's a good way of putting it because I was going to say test his macro game strategy that's pretty much all of the priest deck. Yeah, it's literally yeah, it's actually just priest. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, because you know, doing the, the tricksy little correct micro plays is difficult a lot of the time, but it, it kind of feeds into it because the game is so short anyway a lot of the time. You have to plan out your next few turns very effectively. And what I'm leading up to with this point is the fact that Psychopomp, uh, does he just go for it on turn four to resurrect guaranteed a uh, injured Tolvir, which is obviously pretty good. Does he go for the Amit first to try and have a chance of sticking it, or at the very least what resurrecting you know? it? Or does he save the Amit to go with Bon Sandy for all the one drops? Because we've seen time and time again, Amit into four one drops has to be answered by either Brawl or Plague before the game ends. Yeah, and you know what? All those options, I don't think any of them are bad. That's yeah, the hard right. bit, isn't it? Like, none of them <laughs> are actually just, well, this is wrong. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of it will do would have been based on what this draw was this turn. The issue Tyler has is card draw right now. He has no card uh, draw activations, and he's also got no burst damage because he didn't have Divine Spirit or Inner Fire. So I think Tyler could have actually played this, uh, or can play this quite slowly. Which, by which you mean holding the ammo. Yeah. Which is interesting because I was actually about to say I think that this has presented itself in uh, no, okay. I was going to say it's presented itself in a pretty good opportunity to, to play Amit. But what does Amit I, I do? I guess the high armor total. Well, it, it sets up for playing a Psychopomp That's and it has double buff health. Threat. Like, it's just an incredibly sticky board. Uh, I guess. I just worry with, like, with everything that's available for Rivius, because mm. it's, it's exactly Warrior, you, you need a way to actually kill them. Right? Fair. And, yeah. And also, very interestingly, is that card in Rivius' hand? If he just goes Amit and then Rivius just plays faceless, <laughs> then things can get funky real quick. Amit into Zilliax. <gasps> Pretty nice. <actually>. Yeah. <laughs> the mummy, he's just like <laughs> a four mana three seven rush. Nothing with can Ribbon. hold me. <laughs> Thanks, Mum. <laughs> MVP. <laughs> Tyler Mum, as always, bringing some food, no doubt. Just to keep him sustained. I still love the fact that Tyler's mum told him he's getting too close to relegation and has to start <laughs> practicing yeah. more. That's just such a hilarious story. Step it up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think I'm... Oh, it's... It... <laughs> So tricky, is it? We're just gonna go. Yeah. This is, of course, a slight deviation from the play I was thinking of, of uh, Bon Sam D plus Amit and then a bunch of one drops. But the difference is that he's drawn a couple of one drops in that time. So if Bon Sam D does stick, he'll be able to get a very good effect off of it anyway. I just absolutely dying for some kind of card draw. Psycho Pump, great refill, but th there's no damage. He doesn't want minions. Yeah. He wants either card draw in the Cleric, obviously, um, or he wants Divine Spirits and Inner Fires. He yeah. wants to start pushing damage to close out the game. Does he just drop Psycho Pump because it's absurd? And then he has the full up of one Samdi, even if there's a board clip. Yeah, and, yeah. and it sounds bad, but like when you don't have the best turns, what's just the most 
powerful thing you can do, and it's play four mana, make two seven health minions, one of them has reborn. Like, is that just the beef? Yeah, I think so. Because the thing is, after Born Samedi's played, I was wondering, does he want to save Psychopomp for just one powerful play he can go for after the board's been cleared? But I think the thing is, at that point, he's going to have Clerics, and so he's going to want to draw at that exactly. point, right? So he doesn't and, want to play Psychopomp. And even if you look at Brawl, right? What's actually better, playing Psychopomp now into a Brawl, or playing Psychopomp after Brawl, yeah. unless he reses exactly Amhan, right? Then actually, I would argue having the minions pre-brawl is better because the minions are just stronger. Yeah. And you get two reborn on the board, not one. Is he passing? Well, it's... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I like So this is obviously a little bit of order lull here yes. from Tyler. Yeah. Those minions are not as beefy as they could be. But this is actually one of the things that I think from Tyler, I, I kind of like that we saw it that we haven't been seeing from other GMs where they, they rope out or they save face by making a worse play than just accepting, yeah, I messed up there. You know, that was slightly wrong, but I'm just going to accept it and say, yeah, still make it. He finished I'll, I'll his still turn. make the best he finished play. His turn, right. Which is more than we've seen from some players. So right. you know what? It's obviously not right, yeah. but I think it was. It could have been worse. It could have been so much worse, exactly. And what is right is Amit survived. And cool. made, made the two reborn. Cool. And this is what I mean by playing, although it looked weird to play into Brawl, so to speak, yeah. it, it actually played around bot Brawl by giving an extra reborn minion on the board. Yes, exactly. Which is, again, why I just oh. really wanted to see it come down. Because also, what if the Brawl wasn't there? The game, oh, it, over. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's the strictly powerful turn that turn, and also helps with the worst turn you could have. Yeah. It's both powerful against the current and future issues. And speaking of the future, those clerics see it all with double circle, double cleric, one power away from Tyler probably killing himself with fatigue if he goes for it. <laughs> can Rivius on oh no, Zilliax can't make you overdraw? Yeah, there's no way to overdraw. Sadly. Another oh. ball found. That's pretty important to Rivius' to, chances. He right? has to. Uh, I guess, yeah. Look how many cards he has now, Tyler has now. And let's be honest, he's drawn Cleric. He knows that Cleric is yep. in hand now. <laughs> it's like yeah. he's drawn Cleric because Bron Samdi's down, yeah. so. And he can honestly have a, uh, like, the chances of Circle being in hand is not that low either. Halfway through the deck. Yeah, yeah. Or Circle or Nefreset. You know, like, it, it's not a stretch, is it? Or even point? just double uh, Cleric, Cleric heals. heals. Two yeah, cards. That's two yeah. cards. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty Jeez. nuts, actually. And especially as I think for Tyler next turn, if Brawl doesn't come down, which, yes, it correctly does, I think double cleric circle of healing probably just guarantees lethal at that point, or very, very likely. Okay. Well, Rivius kind of forced into it. But that's two Brawls gone. Does have a lot of rush. But now what is Tyler going to do? Because he can't damage himself to heal. Yeah, there's no way he can get any card draw in this turn, which is obviously kind of sad. And weirdly enough, he does need to be afraid of that Faceless Manipulator, because if he goes all in on a high health, high attack minion, it's a little tricky to get through. He plays a Silence, and he might be confident that he can okay. draw yeah, a yeah. Silence. That's fair. That's fair. So I was thinking, what if he just goes big on health this turn? Turn before Devastator can come down. Sure. And also, without that, there's only one Devastator in the deck doesn't have boom live, which means it's not going to rush yep. as well for effectively 14 burst. I wonder. And you've seen two brawls now. There's only one plague left. There's real AoE in the deck. So maybe you could just play the two one drops to make some room in hand, give some more health to the minions. I like it. Because I, I definitely think with Cleric Double Circle, play some cards this turn, okay. Tyler. Yes. Just get okay. them out of your okay. hand, make some room, because you're about to draw your deck. I agree. I, I agree. And pushes six, gets rid of a good chunk of the armor. And I think especially oh. because we've seen double brawl at this point. So Exactly, yeah, there's, minions, there's barely yeah. anything left. Big pick up there for Rivius indeed. We could see Faceless Attack Execute. He has to tank the six, of course, but why, why honestly... Don't we, why don't you just see Warpath instead? I, I think I like holding on to the Warpath more, okay. actually. A couple of reasons. Like, it leaves no un 
no damage minions on your opponent's side of the board. And with double cleric, that's actually quite a that's nuisance. That's true, that's true. Yeah, uh, on that one. yeah. and Warpath, you know, you want to save it for either top deck, Plague. Uh, Plague, of course, and just five damage to the board is pretty good. Yeah, yeah you know what? Fine. <laughs> Do you want to be like that? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> then fine. <laughs> All right, I think at this point it's quite clearly fishing time. Is it's going to be... He's going to have to use some weird bait though, isn't he? Because he's going to have to hit into the Tolve here with the 1-2 and then heal it. Yeah. I think using the mana, the hero power to heal is good for now. He might draw a Pyromancer, which really changes up the circle of healings. Well, God, that's good. Speak of the card that looks quite a lot actually like the Devil. <laughs> Is it just circle, circle to save mana? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah just do it. This... this Whoa, this is Overdraw City. Is this... The so he literally draws his entire deck. But doesn't. But if he doesn't lethal. find silence... <laughs> Which he did. But it's not lethal, is it? No. And it's too full. Was this horrible from Tyler? I, at this point, I don't even know, to be honest, Darius. I'm being honest here. Oh, wait, is it lethal? No. What is no, happening? Tyler's lost. Tyler's lost. What? Not lost the game, I mean, he's did lost. Did he just trade game. it in? Wait, did he just trade his 13 2? Which will be a, what, 15 17 2 into a 2 5? If so, that Tolve is godlike. Well, even if he doesn't, what difference does it make? No, okay. okay. Okay, well, although he's deep in the fatigue town, he does have double uh, divine spirit in a fire. So if something lives, it's yes, likely that it, it can get a kill. Is that ever going to happen though? Don't know, mate. Triple warpath mummy on this turn leaves Rivius far ahead on board. What did that say about double cleric circles of healing before? <laughs> like, it's so savage how many cards you can add. I think people, until they play the deck a lot, underestimate how many cards you draw. I think Tyler underestimated yeah. how many cards he draw. That, that 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 seemed just wrong. He just dies now. I don't think he's got anything left, has he? He takes six damage on the following turn, so plus the five. It's Blade 11. Master, hero power, sidekick. Zilliax locks out the game. Does it? Oh, with a Pyromancer? Yeah, Pyromancer yeah. and then second Divine Spirit oh, in a fire. Yeah, maybe. So what What about... But he can go do just Zilliax, no attacks. He can still get through because he, he can play three spells, right? If, if he saves them, but can he afford to save them all here? Doesn't he have to go more all in than that? I guess. Does it lock him out of the game? So two I don't know. I don't know. I'm just trying to figure that out now. Is he going all in? Looks like it. 28, 28. Well, so, sorry, not a 28, 28. Zilliax, I mean, Rivius realizes it. Zilliax just locks the game. I, I don't. He trades into the sidekick. Right. And then he, he, he pushes pop, three damage he, face, just plays Zilliax. Right, and he pops the shield and trades, and then has like a 28, 28. Yeah, but he's dead to fatigue. How, how do, wait, how deep in, have I misread how he's deep He's taking six be? next turn and then seven the turn after. And he'll take three here with the, oh, okay, the sure. three two attacking it. I didn't Maybe I'm miscalculating. No, no. Maybe I, I, I didn't realize it was that deep. That's uh, it's my bad. I mean, with this as well. No spells could get through this. Yeah, the, the spells is more about proccing the shield as well, right? It's gonna reduce him down a little bit. But, but you're right. He doesn't attack, right? Surely. I don't see why he would. One silence has been played. Yeah. He, he, also, he doesn't know what those four cards are strictly, because he, unless he had a good track. Oh, he would have. No, he does, he, he because you see the, the cards that yeah. burned. Yeah. Wait, is it healed? Oh, I guess it doesn't matter, right? He needs to make the... Oh, can he win? Because Rivius attacked there. Oh, no, because Pyromancer could still have come down for yeah, an attack in. It didn't the problem make much is he's going to heal yeah. for more 19. Wait, did yeah. he need to heal? He himself wouldn't have done anything, right? No, he dies in two turns no matter what. Wait, unless he... So maybe the attack from Rivius was the game-winning play. To gain more health. To gain the double health. Otherwise, he would have only gained one swing because of the Pyromancer. Yeah. I think that... Yeah, I think that was just 
me completely misreading 19, it. 20, 21, 22, 23. Yeah, it's not enough, is it? Wait, 24, 25? Is he one elf? Because if, if you if you just imagine a world where Rivia's only armors up and plays n nonsense minion, then he can, like, Acolyte of Pain, attack, attack, and then use the... But he'd take an extra fatigue hit because he'd draw, draw the Acolyte, card. which means he'd die. Oh! <laughs> what a game! <laughs> And honestly, it was hard for Tyler, it was hard for us, but I guess we need to wind back and work out exactly what that turn was with the uh, the overdraw along with the attacks. Was could something have done a bit better? Did he need to go double uh, Cleric? Uh, and it, it, there was so much he could, could do, it's hard to break down in the time take it, it takes to run one turn. I think even if you want to go for the double Cleric line, which I disagreed with because he didn't have to go that all in, the Nefeset afterwards to draw four extra cards yeah, it into Fatigue, bit. it's just wrong. Well, I think especially because he didn't... Nef maybe, that's what, maybe that's what he messed up on, or what he thought he messed up on. He didn't Nefeset the Light Ward and he Nefeset the Clerics. You know, because it was more yes. killable, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if he never set the Light Ward, then he would have had way more health and would have been a bit safer. I think the camera's on the wrong person. As far as I saw, Rivius was the winner, but we <laughs> get to see Tyler looking not happy yeah. about losing that game. Understandably so. I feel like that game with that turn was kind of Tyler's to lose. Yes. Uh, especially with the power level of that turn. Uh, we are going to go to a quick break, though, as we sell the next game and ensure Tyler is going to stick around at his desk. So we'll be right back. Legends say powerful treasures are hidden everywhere here in Aldoom. If we hope to defeat Rafam, we'll need as many as we can get. He's already unleashed the ancient plague lords and countless monsters. Keep them distracted, Reno. Not a problem. This plan is totally gonna work. Hey, Ted right, Finley. Oh, yes, I, I have them right where I want them. <laughs> there is an artifact here. The name is... The Scales of Justice! Oh, it must be really fancy! <laughs> Only to be used in a time of great peril. <laughs> yes, I think this qualifies. Hey, look, Finley, you've lured one of the Plague Lords. Take this, fiend! Ah! In the face! Yeah! Hey, guys, get that treasure! We've got a Plague Lord to destroy! Get these, Harry! Not to worry, Finley! We'll just push this thing right here. No! That's a trap! Watch out! It's all good. I am finally tired. Oh. Gracious me! <laughs> what we actually need to do is press this. And there. the tall, ruggedly handsome guy again.
Arok finally gets his wish as we do get to see Rivius' Shaman <laughs> go up against Tyler's Priest. And we are going to see, and I'm just genuinely very interested, on paper, all the cards are there that beat Priest, yep. but does it actually? And and that's my question. It definitely looks like one of the heaviest tech decks for it, but Rivius is going to get the Q into it as well, and we'll see how it goes. What are the key early cards here for Rivius going to be? I think there's a lot working in favor for him. Doomsayer is a bit of a hit or miss card. It can obviously just completely wipe out some key minions, but it dies to silence and topsy turvy, so it can be a bit of a miss there. But generally, I think you know it's it's all the high power cards that you're looking for in the deck, which are things like Spirit of the Frog to get the early cycle going. Thunderhead, of course, can really be the key of, uh, core of the deck. But there's really a lot of good cards. Lickim can be fantastic. Right. Uh, Hagatha's Scheme at the start of the game to clear up a nice big board. Uh, a, an Earthshock, a Hex. All of these cards are something you have to consider. And so that's where the real skill with the deck comes in, which I imagine Rivius is going to be very practiced with, of what are the best of the best? What are you afraid of losing to? And how do you play around that? Oh, wow. Well. There's a couple of cards where he probably doesn't want to see outside of just using his early two drops, the yeah. Omega Mind and the Zephyrus. But the Spirit of the Frog is, I feel, the key that unlocks the deck because you just draw all the cards. Once right. you have any, I feel like, any one cheap spell to get it rolling, it just makes it very, very straightforward and quite difficult for Tyler to deal with. There's no way to kill it while it's stealthed. So yep. you get at least one turn of, of value from it for Rivius. Especially as with this build of the deck, in aggro shaman builds that run Spirit of the Frog, you have spells from zero to three, and you can curve, try and just do as many zero mana yep. spells to go through over and over again. Rivius has spells that cost zero up to six, up to seven, sorry. He could draw all the way up to Earthquake uh, if he hadn't drawn the Reign of Toads there, just with Spirit of the Frog, which is obviously unlikely to happen, but he could just get the perfect curve off of it. Even looking at this coin into uh, potentially lightning bolt. Yeah. It does get the uh, shock, but worth, I think, in my opinion. Yeah, that's a, that's a bit unfortunate. Two out of three times, you got the pretty dreamy card there of uh, shock, but uh, of lightning bolt. Sorry, but yes, it's it's still okay. And now here come the questions. There is an Ephesus ritualist along with a powered shield, and maybe I would have liked that more after seeing the coin. Really? We, he, I think well, like, he can know 100% that Earthshock is in hand right now. Right, and is Earth... So my question is, is, is Earthshock on this Reborn minion a problem or not? I don't think so. Maybe it's not of a problem. I okay. think if that happens, Tyler's pretty happy. Okay. Just gonna witch his brute. Just cycle, cycle, card, cycle. They are a plague of Murlocs. Yeah, that is the card he is looking for. That can just be so huge to shut down anything Tyler does. And that's the biggest thing, God, the biggest standout difference with this deck versus most of the others I see, and most of the other just decks in the game versus Priest, mm. is we talk a lot about, oh, what if you wait and go hammer into one drops of one Sandy into the blah, blah, blah. You can't really do that because a Plague of Murlocs, an Earthquake, just stops that happening. So right. you just sort of take away one of the Priest's sort of battle plans, depending on how the rest of the game has gone. And I think that's quite powerful. It kind of feels like pre, uh, Shaman is in the spot that Priest was in, kind of interestingly swapping around uh, a few months ago when we go back to Kobolds and Catacombs where there was just so, or a, a couple of years ago at this point, there was just so many, so many removal spells for Priest when they had the Mass Hysteria and the Psychic Screams and the Dragonfire Potion at the start as well. I guess they didn't quite come so. Um, but there were just so Those many removal cards. Them, yeah, yeah. yeah. And now Shaman's in that same spot with Hagatha's Scheme, the Plague of Murlocs and the Earthquakes. There's just too much removal. But Tyler has managed to stick a couple of minions on the board, and he's not really phased much by this totem. So he can get cooking now, and we'll probably see Tyler not particularly go too all in mm. on you know any one minion early. This isn't the matchup where you go, I'm going to make an 8-8 and, and hit them in the face. Like, no, you, you're generally going to do what Tyler, I feel, is doing a good job of right now, which is just threatening damage, but not really over committing anything. And I think that's a great point that you raised that I wanted to talk about, which is that Tyler has got the kind of hands in both games where if he'd been playing against Zoo, uh, I don't know, Rogue, Highlander, Hunter, any of the tempo-based decks, he would have won the game already yeah. because it was disgustingly powerful in both games. But where he's falling flat is how he deals with these decks that have removal cards. Oh. How do you extend into the late game? Not bad. Yeah, that was pretty good. And point out an Earthshock as well. Wow. Like, that's that a big of deal. Murlocs was... Big deal. Rivius heading into his power turns, though, quite clearly with Earthquake, should he need it? Swamp Queen, Hagatha, if he doesn't. 
And when you consider a lot of Priest games are normally over by now, Rivius is doing fantastic. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. And the if Hearthstone had achievements, achievements should pop up. It's like, survive till turn seven against <laughs> Priest. 0.1% of players have unlocked this <laughs> achievement. And the other percentage haven't, because they're the ones playing Priest. <laughs> So Tyler quite clearly knows that he is heading into an unoverloaded turn seven, which means development is something you should be very, very hesitant to commit to. What about right? just trade and face? What if he just trades the Finley in, goes face, heals the Finley back up? Pass? Because at any point, he could double that health twice and just kill Rivius, yeah. right? So I like the kind of halfway. I feel like this is an overcommittal uh, for me. This is a lot of stuff. I see what he's going for here in that he is able to keep a minion at one health against Earthquake, which with Neferset in hand, okay, it does something. It's not completely useless. Oh, well, if you're going to draw with the top like deck that, of Cleric, Tyler. Yes, then it's very so good. So you should heal first, right? Yes, yeah, yeah absolutely. Get the double card draw. Get this small order. <laughs> But I, uh, I think I agree with you that that was probably, on average, an overcommittal from Tyler. I feel like most of his draws, then he, he only has this like two eight and a mm. two three on the board. Apart from exactly getting cleric, it's, yeah. uh, the, the recovery is like, ha, you earthquake me, but now I have a two eight and a two three, and, and River's like, okay, <laughs> right. A lot less cheap overload cards in this deck than there are in the aggro or token versions of Shaman. So this Thunderhead is going to be struggling to get the work done now, uh, now that a Zap and a Lightning Bolt have been used. But still look just at, as a 3-6 body, it's not bad. What? Huh? What do you do? Topsy. Is someone it's alright yeah, for yeah, Tyler. Yeah, I, I, I guess. It's just uh, the combination is just like a bad turn no matter what happens yeah, a yeah, lot yeah. of the time, right? Because yeah. the frogs are just an absolute pain. They are very annoying. Unless they're like great circle targets, I guess. And I guess for Rivius, he has a kind of a, oh no, I was going to say a win-win here, where if he doesn't clear the board of Doomsayer, he can Earthquake. He cannot. He's overloaded for three going into the next turn. The next so, turn's a dicey one. Yeah, this does actually start to so, look a bit shaky now for Rivius. So now, I think Tyler should hmm. think about exactly what he does. I think he should drop Psycho Pump. Just commit to the board as much just, as possible. Yeah, just go. You need to hit through these taunts and kill him next turn. Rely on the heart of the cards. Because if you think there's only what yeah. Hagatha's scheme, if Rivius has held it, right. is this scary part, yes. right? But I like it. That you, you, This deck is kind of built to... That's not a bad one, actually. <laughs> the, the deck is like built to beat you. Yeah. So get take the window of opportunity and go. And just go for the win. Is Murloc Priest the way of the future? <laughs> Maybe he's like, oh no, I, I gave him this. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, I think what he's also starting to think is, uh, damn it, this uh, is starting to look scary because I cannot clear the board on this turn. Which means. Just heals up. Yeah, which is brew. What about if you just. Um, <sighs> yeah, with Thunderhead Hero Power. Oh, then you've Thunderhead Witch's mm. is brew ever just good enough? Because then maybe the Thunderhead's enough to get damage onto the tall bear? Yeah. It's tough. Maybe, yeah. yeah I think I prefer this line from him. Uh, probably would like to see an attack in as well, just so that um, Earthquake is a guaranteed clear next turn, even with a heal on the tall bear. I guess maybe that just gives you <laughs> more damage. That That's has to be lethal game, now. Right? That has to be game. Tyler could again go for double cleric circle of healing to draw his entire deck. But this again. time, I think it's actually yeah. correct. <laughs> yeah. Draws eight cards. Yeah, which is perfect hand space. No overdrawing here. That's That has to be game. There we go. A game that I thought was going to be going a very different way when Rivius was able to clear the board completely. And to Tyler's credit, his play that we kind of discredited of going for the 8 health Tolvir into the Earthquake turn arguably won him the game. Yeah, yeah, that's that's definitely reasonable. Uh, I, I, again, I, I do like his 
his psycho pump timing, I think, was perfect. Yeah. The, the acknowledgement of, well, now you're very overloaded. Yeah. yeah and yeah. Uh, I guess the topsy turvy was the real kicker because without that, Tyler would not be in a good spot at all. Uh, but he got the topsy turvy off. He had a much more secure game plan then, and I think just went for it at the right times. Like I, like you said, the I was kind of questioning how how much he went in there on that eight health. But it was the minion that killed him. Yeah. Uh, well, it killed uh, Rivia, should I say. So, okay. I'm uh, yet to be convinced fully, but we'll see. And to be fair to Tyler, that game was starting to look pretty rough for him. He had mm -hmm. to play to an out. That wasn't out, and he met it. I don't know if that's what he had in mind when he was making the play, or if he just thought, this sticks on the board, and I have a Tolvir. Maybe I can make a big minion from it. Uh, but either way, it worked out very nicely for him. Yeah, the key point for me, really, though, was when he went... He, he went it was two twofold, right? He went all in, so to speak, mm. on the eight health versus the likelihood of an earthquake. My issue was... Even if that happened, his Tolver survives, he plays the uh, Nefreset. Mm. If he didn't draw exactly Cleric, Fair. that looks worse, yeah. <laughs> right? If it was Obviously. just Nefreset, yeah. and then a 2-8 and a 2-3, and that's all Ravis has to deal with, then yeah. it looks way, way better. He wouldn't have drawn into some of the other cards as quickly. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Game's over. One and one. And I believe it is going to be uh, the Hunter versus Paladin. Kind of an... Not quite with the exact archetypes because of Highlander Hunter, but kind of an old school matchup because this yeah. Paladin deck's been knocking around a while. And even in its Highlander form, Hunter still wants to just kill you. So it's still going to be effectively, uh, I would argue, a race for Hunter versus the Paladin's timeouts, basically. Yeah, pretty much for the Hunter to try and kill the Paladin and for the Paladin to just try and stall, stall, stall while obviously drawing its entire deck to go for the Shivala Shuffle mm -hmm. OTK. Hopefully this will be a somewhat less eventful uh, Holy Wrath OTK Paladin than we've seen sometimes this weekend. You know, we've seen Tyler make a blunder today, but I think something of that caliber shall not be repeated again. Yeah. Let's get into it. Game number three, last game of the day and right. of the week. The last score that's going to change within the divisions of Asia-Pacific Grandmasters and not the best hand in the world for Tyler. A bit lacking. It, to be fair, it's a fairly strong defensive hand, which meant that if Rivius had an aggressive start, it would be good. But Rivius doesn't have an aggressive start. Does that mean it's bad for Tyler? He doesn't want to see an aggressive start. But he doesn't have the hand to punish a non-aggressive oh, start is the problem. <laughs> yeah. And of course, if he can find uh, an equ uh, sorry, a prismatic lens or a Christology, Tyler's looking fantastic. Yeah, just to note on my criticism of other Holy Wrath Piled Index, Tyler's only playing one Equality and one True Silver, but at least he has two Consecrates, mm. which feels a little bit better. Although, again, I still just... I don't know what it is. Maybe someone's mathed it out and they think one true silver mana-wise and uh, time-wise fits better. Yep. But I, I just always worry that like it's just not enough. I feel like I always want that extra weapon. Maybe the Zephyrus makes up for the true silver. We'll see. Apologies for <laughs> the PowerPoint the game here we're seeing. We'll try and get this sorted as soon as possible. And Tyler will try and get his hand sorted as soon as possible. Having zero card draw effects at all going into turn it's just four. It's unlikely, isn't it? It's very unlikely, and it's very bad as well. It's just not paladin like. <laughs> it's not gentlemanly. Yeah. What a vulgar game of Hearthstone we're playing now when both players aren't just drawing their deck in three turns. How uncivilized. For now, though, these secrets are going to mess with Tyler a little bit. Hey yo! But now, can't exactly play everything out that easily. That's what he's got to worry about. The rat trap is a a real fear because he can't just Very take true. six. Like Very true. that is just such a large number when your health is just everything in this matchup. Yeah, I think we see the respect. Plays it out pretty easily here. Rat trap is uh, as long as you're careful and you're vigilant in this matchup. Rat trap's usually not too much of a problem. You can usually proc it going into a turn you were going to clear anyway. Just sweep out of the way. Tyler's got too much card draw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the issue is these Consecrates. Maybe he just gets one out of the way. Consecrate trade. Yeah, Consecrate trade Christology, because he's at nine cards at the moment, so that would be down to... Yeah, so he wouldn't overdraw. Oh, no, wait. He would mm. overdraw if he does that, because of the Thalnos effect. Hmm. I've got a question for you, Derek. If your second name was Tology, 
Would you name your son Chris? Yes. <laughs> okay, good answer. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, I, th I feel like actually maybe not, because there's a lot of good joke names that you could have if your surname was Tology. <laughs> that's, that's true, actually. <laughs> I'm going for the good old wholesome Hearthstone <laughs> ones, but if you want to go there, Derek, by all means. Hey, I didn't say anything. It's <laughs> all in your head, man. I actually made to differ. I'm pretty sure it's all in your head. <laughs> maybe you should ask my good friend Headtologist to sort me out. Ha <laughs> 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 ha! expected better. And worse at the same time. What is a head doctor? I don't know. A craniologist? Probably, yeah. yeah. A neurosurgeon? Was that an incredibly stupid thing to say? I don't well, know. that's brain, right? There's a lot more well, going on up there. Yeah, but that's, for most a, people. that's a surgeon, though. Yeah. It's got to so. be a difference, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Like neurologist, just, just, just yeah, maybe. Yeah. Just because just I'm an expert, since <laughs> I'm an expert, like <laughs> someone's brain. It's like <laughs> now, let me cut it open. <laughs> right, come on. Exactly. Tyler does end up proking the rat trap here with the uh, coin. No real answer. Well, coin to do. Off the top. He oh, finds I mean the answer. Yeah. He doesn't deserve the answer, but he has it. Yeah. Uh, to be fair to him, it's not necessarily the end of the world to have activated it. Taking six damage mm. here when he has, you know, the ability to heal to tremendous heights with all the armor he's gained is not that bad. And I think this is probably better than points of G. It, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's tough because it's also, you've got to think there's actually nine damage on the weapon as right. well. There's a million damage from King Crush. Like, Tyler's going to have to time out soon. <laughs> like, He's gonna have to find oh, it first. There's Kill Command Life Drinker next to and that's eight from hand. Yeah. Oh no, ten from hand, because the hero power he can fit in. These are reasonably strong from hand. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. The bow. <laughs> These are pretty strong turns starting to come together though for Tyler. Um, no Kango. Wow. Yeah, having used the Kango is pretty sad at this point actually. Subdue consecration. It's not perfect, actually. That's the issue, isn't it? It's like yeah. that Tyler has to do like five different things, and right. he can only do like two of them. Which means any turn is going to feel bad in some aspect. Oh, well. That's a good one. So, what about oh. to time out pass? Probably has to now. Yeah, right? I like it. Time, well, maybe even a novice engineer coin timeout. Just yeah. use the mana, draw, draw, draw. Like, what's Coin going to do next turn? Probably not a lot. Yeah. Shrink Ray's a good pickup for next turn with Consecrate. Especially as he yep. can go timeout, then swing in order to take yep. out the rat. Yeah. Or just don't. He's going to take it out next turn, right? With Shrink Ray? Yep, Shrink Ray, Consecrate. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, this is fine. I was just wondering if it was worth, like, getting rid of it so he doesn't have to clear next turn. But I think when you factor in Rivius' likely heavy development, yeah, it it will, yeah, yeah you the will odds on Rivius just not doing anything is, is so low. It, yeah. New secrets for Rivius as well now, which is a bit of a problem again for time. But luckily, he's only planning, as far as I'm aware at least, to play two cards this turn. Another rat trap here for Rivius. I think he attacks a minion with this one, one, right? Tries to proc Snape. Before or after the Shrink Ray? I guess after, right? I guess it doesn't make a difference. Doesn't make a difference. I yeah. Oh, do you? <laughs> oh, because he doesn't it? really want to keep giving this bow charges. Does he ever have to attack into a minion this game until the end of the game? Maybe not. Arguably not. Not until it's not relevant anymore when he's no, like exactly attacking like, for like well, the game's ended yeah. at that point if yeah. you choose to attack. So maybe Tyler mm. actually never has to swing into a minion with anything, so then he just doesn't have to proc it and he can just go for this play right now. I wonder if he also never has to proc Freezing Trap, because when you proc Freezing Trap with Shavala, it's effectively useless because it bounces back but costs zero and has rush. Most of the time, yeah. Pretty much all the time, yeah. Quickly. And so for Tyler, I actually like the, the hold there. I, I think it's very possible that he can just go for, at a later date, the Shavala for the making it a useless freezing trap. 
Rivius now very much starting to feel the heat as he is getting very close to the lethal mark. You know, Life Drinker, Hero Power, Bow, like you said, it's all getting close. But Tyler is getting real close to the end of his deck, and Rivius is below the I, threshold. I think Tyler's on timeout or dead, right? There's, there's what, like... Oh. Wow. Well, he's also on a 1 out of 5 to win the game. He doesn't need to be now, though, does he? He could go for Holy Wrath first and then Holy uh, Timeout if he misses. Like, it just draws an extra card. He probably only needs one this game. True. Always got to be thinking about Zulchin. It's you don't, you don't like, like, lose a game because you just, ooh, I just randomly went for a 1 in 5. I don't mean it's random, but yes, if you yeah, don't yeah. have to go for it and your opponent can heal, Life Drinker Zul'jin. They exist. Heals exist in the deck. I think I like it here for a couple of reasons. One is you could just win the game, obviously, on the spot. Right, yeah, is a pretty, pretty good, good reason. reason yeah. uh, the second one is Holy Wrath does some amount of damage. Mm. Hammer of Wrath can do a bit more damage. The swing can do a bit more. I think even with factoring in Zul'jin, Tyler should be able oh, to get really? there. Okay. Either way, I think it's a must timeout. Because if not, he's just taking too much damage, right? Yeah. He just has to. Gonna go for it? Yeah, I like yeah. it. Does the game land? Question mark? It did! Got it. Oh! <laughs> oh! Rivius, make sure your hands are alright, mate. I've done that many, many times, and I understand. But please don't hurt your hands, because I've done it. And it's not good when you need yep. your hands to play. Congratulations to Tyler. Sometimes, Holy Wrathing, because you might just win, is a good enough reason when I fall for maybe too often. But, yeah, well, and the game just ended. It did. And, you know, that was, I think, late enough in the game when Rivius can be upset, but he can't be like, oh, that was a, you know, a, a golden clip. Yeah, 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 yeah just yeah. a meme of a game. A, a turn five Holy Wrath win. Yes, right? exactly. Like, like, that was a... There's what, considered five, five decision there. Yeah, five cards left. A considered decision there uh, for Tyler, which was not necessarily an autoplay. I think it was correct. And even if it hadn't worked out there, I think it still put him in a better position overall. Yeah, I, I think it, it wasn't a hard loss if he missed. He still draws a card, yep. still gets deeper to the deck. The most important thing for me, outside of exactly that Holy Wrath, of course, was yep. just it had to be timeout. Obviously, unless he just won that turn. But of the course. timeout was hyper important because <laughs> there was so much damage in Rivius's hand that yeah. the game would have just ended anyway, which I think added to Rivius's frustration sure. in that exact outcome. But I believe Tyler is ready for his interview. So we just got to check. Tyler, can you hear us? Hey, can you hear you? Hey, uh, c congratulations on another win. Things seem to be going Thanks. well this uh, weekend for you. Um, just want to ask you before we get into maybe the, potentially the Holy Wrath piled in, uh, just looking back at those Priest games, there were definitely <laughs> ups and downs for, for throughout those games. Do you just want to talk me through how you feel they went and if there were anything you thought was good or particularly uh, bad about them? Yeah, the, the game against the Warrior was was, uh, <laughs> was a mess. Like, yeah. uh, I think it was correct to draw like a million cards there, but then like the rope came and I just... I, I straight up panicked and I just played the heal guy and I drew four more and I overdrew everything. That one should have been a win. That one was like a mega throw. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then. Go, go, go. Yeah, that one was just a throw. That was just really <laughs> bad. Um, and then after that, I just yeah, I just got lucky. I, I felt like uh, I was gonna get punished for throwing that one, but I didn't. And then um, we, uh, me and Derek talk a lot about Priest being a little bit more complicated than a lot of people, I think, make it out to be. Because, yes, sometimes you just win games, but the games you don't just win can get a bit tricky. Uh, how comfortable do you feel with Priest at the moment? Is it something uh, that you're pretty happy playing, obviously, outside of just what one rough turn you had in, the, in game one? Yeah, like, Combo Priest used to be, like, like my favorite deck of all time. Like, I, I, back in the day, I played, like, um, the Dragon version. Oh, yeah. yeah. And... It plays somewhat similar, but like it, this one is definitely more intricate. Like the dragon version play a lot for example sometimes. You just play some big big dragons and then you buff them. And here you actually have to really decide when to go all in or like when to play for the board. When when do you overcommit and when do you not overcommit? Yep. And especially against the warrior, it's really hard to decide. Like they have so much removal. And like I'm constantly checking the deck list and I'm like, oh god, he has a faceless. <laughs> oh god, he has a spell breaker. Oh god, he has like uh Super Collider, and like there's everything you have to play around, so sometimes you have to decide what not to play around. And it was the yeah. same thing for the Shaman, I, like, it's a deck full of removal, so I, at some point I just had to go in, I felt like. So that turn where you went for the, you made the 8 health 
uh, Nefeset going into the Earthquake turn. We were talking a lot about that. Were you playing exactly to the out of Cleric, or were you just thinking this is the best player and he removes all my stuff all the time anyway? Yeah, both. I was like, right. uh, like my best out is Cleric, uh, and if that's not there, then I heal him back to full, and then my yeah, best yeah. out is that he doesn't have hex, right? right? So like that that that's what I meant with. Sometimes you have to like, yeah, not play around everything and just hope. It's yeah. not there. You have to or make plays that fun. look kind of weird, but actually make sense in terms of being able to win the game. But no, yeah. It, uh, it, like, his deck is just full of removal. It's just play yeah. it slow. You just remove everything one by one, and they just never win. Yeah, it's, uh, okay. it makes sense to us anyway, at least. But no, congratulations, Tyler. Again, on a great weekend for you. Good job. And uh, we'll see you next week, mate. Thanks. See you next week, man. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, honestly, I think th th there was the blunder, of course, in game number one yeah. uh, from Tyler, but I think overall his play has definitely sharpened up from last week uh, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, honestly, I, uh, I really don't want to go in too hard on Tyler. It's only because uh, he was, for a long time, my favorite Hearthstone player uh, when he was at his peak. The stuff like that is just not things that I think Tyler should be making right. because I have so much respect for him. But I agree, it's on the up, and I think if he continues to tighten it up, then we could see a return to form for him here. Yep. Okay, well, let's t uh, check out the results of the day and let's see what has happened. As well, this is the end for us. So uh, not too long ago, to be honest, uh, Chansu took another win mm. over Shaxi. And Chansu looking fantastic so far this season. Not only good lineups, but solid play. Really marking him out as one of the stars of season two. Yeah, and for Glory as well, he is keeping up that similarly almost perfect record over in Division B with Frosty going down to a somewhat suboptimal, I think it's three and five now he's at after the first few weeks here in Grandmasters. But the real uh, sad story this week has undeniably been Blitzchung, another 0-2 week for him here. Um, which means that with Patra taking a 1-1 week, going up a little bit higher than him, he is faring, staring down relegation directly in the yeah. face. He's now not equal, he's actually behind, yes. which is a, obviously a marginally larger problem. Um, and then, you know, we just saw those two matches. We don't need to go too in-depth. I'm sure you remember them. And if you're not, check out the VODs. Uh, but let's check up uh, on the actual uh, outcome. What does the standings look mm -hmm. like right now as uh, we can take a look? 7-1 Chansu, 7-1 Glory. And honestly... Seems right to me. Both players, strong lineups, good plays. Alutimu consistently having you know very similar lineups to Glory. Yeah. But I feel Alutimu has made more mistakes than Glory has with those lineups. Yeah. So I think the results of the top players in each division are very reflective of what we've seen performance-wise in Grandmaster Season 2. And uh, I'm just going to give one shout-out to Surrender. Boom! Straight up to second place, having a rough couple of first weeks. Really done well in the past few weeks and been showing that, again, not only his lineups, one of the first players to bring Priest yeah, in yeah. this season of Grandmasters in APAC, not only his lineups good, but his plays solid as well. That's right. Two 2 0 weeks in a row for Surrender here. Oof, which is Those are some great weeks if you're a Grandmaster. Right, exactly. Whereas on the other side, it's it feels to me, again, like it's that fight to try and edge into fourth place for everyone, Alutimu and below. Whereas Division A, with all that around the middle, it's Blood Trail lagging behind and everyone else scrambling for second through fourth. Yeah, even Samuel Sao, which looks, he, just a quick glance looks worse. Yeah. It's a one game difference between him and third place, yeah. right? You know, next next week, all of that could jumble and change. Samuel Sao could be third, yeah. maybe, depending on how the results go. If he has a good week and a few of the other players don't, he could be in that top four bracket. So everything to play for. Blood Trail, of course, and Blitzchung cannot be ignored. They have a huge amount of work and a really uphill climb to uh, stave off relegation and to have any realistic chance at a top four, I think it is doable, yeah. but doable is just a, a factually correct thing to say. <laughs> doesn't mean it's easy or going to happen in any respect. So we'll see what happens in a few weeks. Especially as if you're down at 1-7, you have not been playing perfect Hearthstone. Far from it, right. I'd say. Something, you, something's gone wrong somewhere. Exactly. You know, even when it's players who have done very well last season, like Fino in a very similar p uh, position where he's down right at the bottom despite qualifying through to BlizzCon. He's clearly still a fantastic Hearthstone player, but something's not been going in with his way. He's trying to figure it out. It's still a small sample size, but you don't go 1-7 and seven without making serious mistakes. Yeah, no, and uh, in, in this field anyway, generally we talked about it yesterday and the day before, I think when, like, for me, 
this is all about who makes the least mistakes at a consistent rate uh, game in, game out. And it's what we saw, I feel, you know, a lot of last season from Alu Timo and Shaxi. Mm. We've seen a lot this season as well from the top players that are performing well. They're just playing good, solid Hearthstone a day in, day out. So it looks good to me. But we are done for the week. It's been our pleasure to bring you another week of Hearthstone and Grandmasters for the Asia Pacific region. But as always, we are not done yet because Europe is going to follow up and then America's with TJ and Dan after that. So be sure to stay tuned to watch some more Hearthstone. But from Derek and myself, we are done for the weekend. So we'll see you next week.